In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen. It is with great joy that today we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. No doubt you have heard, or will shortly hear, the catechetical homily of St. John Chrysostom, a sermon that is usually given during Pascha's Divine Liturgy. Within this sermon, we hear that Pascha is for everyone. It is a universal celebration, all of creation, heaven and earth, those who have fasted, those who have not fasted, those who have been attentive, those who have been heedless, the rich, the poor, all are included and welcome at the feast of the resurrection of Christ. We also hear about the triumphal nature of the resurrection, Christ's victory over death, that Hades in, uh, took a body and encountered God. I'd like to spend a few minutes with you reflecting on these two aspects a bit further. Today we celebrate Christ's resurrection over death. This is a victory not brought about by some sort of force or superhuman strength or even a trick, but rather the power of God's own perfect love. This is the gift of the resurrection, God's love for us. Christ shatters the gates of Hades and opens the gates of paradise through his resurrection, where he emerges from the grave as a bridegroom from a bridal chamber. This nuptial imagery of Christ emerging from, from the grave as one welcoming his bride. This is an image of love. The power Christ uses is not brute strength or anything of that's destructive in its power. When he destroys Hades, he does it through the presence of perfect divine love. It's a self-giving love. God gives himself to us through his passion and through his death and through his resurrection. This is a love that goes even to the deepest parts of the earth, that enters into death itself and grants life for our sakes. A love that enlightens and enlivens everything. This cannot be extinguished or put to death because God is love and God is life. Christ is risen is in this way, I'd like to say, and a divine I love you. Every time we say Christ is risen, we should think of God's love for us. Christ's passion, death, and resurrection are a manifestation of God's love for us. This is the triumph we celebrate and affirm as we respond, truly, he is risen. Christ invites us into his resurrection to share in this power over death, not only at the moment of our earthly departure, but now. We are not celebrating the resurrection because it means when we die that we will go to heaven. We are celebrating the resurrection because it also means that right here and now we get to live and have our lives transformed by the power and the presence of God uniting himself to us. Every Sunday is a Paschal celebration. Indeed, many saints rise in the morning, first thing, singing, Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and upon those in the tombs bestowing life. Even during Lent, we have evidence of saints singing the Paschal hymn as a way of reminding themselves of God's love and their love for the world. We are invited to live in the reality of the resurrection, to proclaim it in our words and deeds and love of others. The resurrection breaks into time so that we can sing in the first ode of the Paschal Canon, it is the day of resurrection. Let us be radiant, O people. Pascha, the Lord's Pascha. For Christ God has brought us from death unto life and from earth to heaven. So we sing the triumphal hymn. Today is the day of the resurrection. Not just Pascha Sunday, but every moment we encounter, respond to, and proclaim God's perfect love. As we have sung all through Lent at the services of Great Compline, God is with us. Understand all ye nations and submit yourselves, for God is with us. With the resurrection, we celebrate that Christ brings us from death to life and from earth to heaven. Not only do we as Christians, as St. Athanasius likes to boast, no longer need fear bodily death, but we are also called to bear witness to the resurrection even now in our daily lives, whenever we encounter the things of death, darkness, or despair. How do we, like the myrrh-bearing women, bear witness to the resurrection in such moments of pain, fear, or anguish? It is through bearing the power of Christ in our hearts, faith in the resurrection, and becoming icons of love in this world. Christ is risen, and he has given us life everlasting. 
And that gift invites us to be deified, to become like God through grace, and to participate in him through the presence of the Holy Spirit here and now. At midnight, at Pascha, we sing, Come receive light from the unwaning light and glorify Christ who is risen from the dead. This hymn is not just about lighting candles and offering symbolic liturgical instructions to come forward, light your candle, and go back to where you were. These are spiritual invitations to receive the light of the resurrection, of the very presence of God's love in our own hearts. No rain or wind or bumpy car ride home can extinguish the illumination we are called to get from encountering the resurrection out of the church and into the world in which we live. We must bring the resurrection home with us and let it illumine our whole lives. We are called to receive and bear this Paschal light by participating in and being transformed by the love of God. This is the light offered at the resurrection. The same mystical divine light that is experienced by the saints of God and encountered in every Eucharistic celebration, the light that enlightens all. Such Paschal power and illumination invites our participation and response. Divine love manifest and offered cannot be exclusionary or particular, but is universal, abundant, and overflowing. If we listen to the Doctus Dicon, we hear, It is the day of resurrection. Let us be radiant for the festival, and let us embrace one another. Let us say, O brethren, even to those that hate us, let us forgive all things on the resurrection, and let us cry, Christ is risen from the dead, by death hath he trampled down death, and on those in the tombs bestowed life. To proclaim the resurrection is to receive God's love and offer it to others in forgiveness, unity, and to call brother even the ones that might hate us, to embrace all of creation with love and paschal joy. Let us be proclaimers of the paschal tidings, Christ is risen. Let the divine love, the power that is love of others, even into the depths of the earth, to Hades itself, on behalf of another, perhaps an unworthy other, an other who has rejected or crucified you, and yet you love them with divine love still. Let the love be present in and proclaimed from our hearts this Paschal season. Let it take hold and transform us in a never-ending day, because it is in this day and each moment the day of resurrection for us to be illumined people. To celebrate this feast, we are enjoined to embrace one another with joy. And as the myrrh-bearing women to be filled with joy as we proclaim the resurrection every day in all our interactions with others. Even if we feel we are living in the tombs, Christ has come to show us life. He has come to bestow on us life. He has come to not just end death, but victoriously conquer death, and not with some sort of might other than that which is divine love. It is through love that all is conquered and we share in the resurrection of Christ. St. John Chrysostom's homily reminds us, let no one bewail transgressions, for forgiveness hath dawned from the tomb and Christ is risen, and there is none dead in the tomb. Not only should our love be towards all others we encounter, but even, perhaps most difficultly, towards ourselves. There is so much in the world in this moment in time and in every moment in different ways that bring sadness, sorrow, longing, pain. And yet in all of us, all of this, let the joy break through that is the risen Christ. This year, we may celebrate Pascha on our computers at home or in smaller church gatherings, or perhaps in full churches, but with no feast afterwards due to the pandemic. But let each of us take Pascha in our hearts and be renewed with all of creation, singing our celebration and Paschal praises, a Pascha that doesn't end because love never ends. As we sing, this is a Pascha of delight, a Pascha freedom from sorrow. Let us be freed from all of our sorrows as we celebrate and have faith in the resurrection of Christ. Let us sing in our hearts with overwhelming joy Shine, shine, O new Jerusalem, for the glory of the Lord hath arisen upon thee. Dance now and be glad, O Zion, and do thou exalt, O pure Theotokos, in the arising of him whom thou didst bear. Let us, as the Theotokos, bear Christ also in the world, and rejoice that Christ is risen from the dead, 
trampling down death by death, and upon those in the tombs bestowing life. Amen.